my boyfriend's DMs, but he's dyslexic. Where you at? I'm in Iowa. I'm in town. Oh. Okay, so this girl goes through her boyfriend's phone and finds this message with kind of a flirty picture saying, where are you at? I'm in town. So she confronts him about it and his reaction is misreading it and thinking it says, I'm in Iowa. Well, people did not appreciate her just laughing this off. The comments quickly descend into madness, with the primary assumption being that he's been faking his dyslexia this entire time so that he can act dumb because he's a cheater. The women in the comments, who have apparently forgotten all about Women's Month and female empowerment, have been roasting the shit out of her, reminding her that she's pathetic, making excuses for him, and that she needs to wake up. Who's gonna tell her? Girl, don't just say that. You be in play. Nah, they've been texting. He just deleted the messages. I don't trust him. Yeah, things aren't looking great for the boyfriend here, but as the video gets more and more viral, the internet does its thing, and in a never-before-seen partner-shaming twist, we get this comment. A woman comes in and says that this is an account that has been pretending to be her for 10 years. Others corroborate the story, saying they've followed me and unfollowed me several times. Apparently, this has been an issue for her for years, with this catfish making its way through the entire University of Florida. So basically, this dude was just being solicited by a professional catfish. I mean, homegirl was probably in the deep, filtered out DMs that you have to click a bunch of links to get to just to find this. You mean to tell me in your grown age, you're starting fights with your man over his spam folder? You're sending the internet into a whole tizzy over a bot and her response to learning all of this leave me alone at this point i'm minding my business i don't do anything i don't say anything leave me alone please enough time has gone by where it's valid to leave me alone i beg of you truly yeah, you guessed it. It's the Just Kidding We're Fine video with the usual self-victimization and lack of accountability. That's right. She's not the one who's out of touch. It's all of us who are the problem. Look, put the man's phone down. Go touch some grass. You're making yourself look very goofy. Bad partner shamer. Bad. Three ways my husband was a tremendous support person while I was in labor. Oh boy, what did this guy do? Brought his own fan. How dare he bring things to make himself more comfortable? Canceled. Made sure he didn't miss a meal, even though I wasn't allowed to eat anything. Look at this dude. He probably burns like a thousand calories an hour. Stayed well rested while I was kept awake by contractions and his snores. So the partner being shamed here is actually Jason Kelsey, who plays for the Philadelphia Eagles and brings in roughly 14 million a year. Now, I'm not saying if you earn $14 million a year, you're allowed to be a lazy piece of crap while your wife is in labor. What I am saying is that apparently even if you bring in $14 million a year, put your wife up in a private luxury hospital room and never leave her side, she can still make you look like a lazy piece of crap to the internet for clout. And I hear you barking, big dog. Come on, Lauren. She's just joking. You sure about that? I literally would scream at my husband. 100% now my ex-husband. This actually makes me mad. While it's being turned into somewhat of a joke, I know how incredibly hurtful this is. It's not really a joke when women really resent their husbands over this and why Want them to feel bad. And my question to you is, as a mother, outside of just being there, available, and supportive, what do you expect men to do during your labor? Is he to just sit there staring at you, unblinking, depriving himself of every bodily need? Is he only a supportive partner if he's in as much or more agony than you? And look, Jason will survive. He's a beloved American celebrity athlete. He'll be fine. But to the average lady posting stuff like this about your man, I'm just letting you know that to a lot of us, it doesn't make your man look bad. It just makes you look like you hate him. So if that's what you wanted to do, congrats. To a VIP area, and then that's where he claims he was drugged. Go back and watch all of her videos. This is a story that has been going viral over the last two days after this creator uploaded a video of herself throwing all of her husband's clothes off the balcony as he attempts to pick them up with the caption, don't let your husband go to Vegas without you. All the big creators are chiming in on this. Mama Tot, Jolly Good Ginger. And everyone has been dragging this man. You found his Facebook. He had to delete his Facebook. He's getting called a cheater, a liar, a gaslighter. And no one, nobody in the whole comment section, none of these creators stopped and paused when she said he'd been drugged? For me, that, cha that changed everything. But for all of you, you don't believe him. None of you believe him. And those of you who do believe him are still saying that it's his fault because he should have known better, should have been able to defend himself. You women are in the comments right now unironically saying that a real victim would have gone and gotten tested and gone to police right away, and if not, they're lying. And none of you can see the implications of what you're saying just because he's a man? This is such a messed up saga right now, and ladies, 
God help you if he is telling the truth. Welcome back to Lady Shit My Boyfriend Does, a series. Oh, good. We don't have enough of this on TikTok. Oh, the horror. Like, the towel was just fine. What? <laughs> Okay, so mini wife strike here has been bothering me for a while because you look at her account, which is just an ode to partner shaming. I mean, we have the usual red flag. You aren't his mother. He's supposed to be an equal partner. I've made the same mistake. It doesn't get easier, right? And then you look at his channel and it just makes it so much more sad. Just watch. I'm getting hella comments and tags and this saying I'm a piece of shit and I'm lazy and all that. And people are like, you can't blame ADHD. But here's the thing. So I've recently been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and I didn't know why I was like this because I was undiagnosed until 29. Um, but now I understand and I'm trying to work through it. It's very, very hard. So the reason Jackson is defending his ADHD is because Francoise actually made her caption, do I blame him or his ADHD? So this man is not only ADHD, but he's just recently been diagnosed, meaning he is just now getting the tools he has needed his entire life. Now, I talk a lot about the harm in calling people with ADHD lazy, predominantly because their brains are working so hard to do the same task as normal people, so they really resent the implication that they're just being lazy. And now he has a partner who not only constantly calls him lazy, but has also created an entire platform to get thousands of other people to call him lazy. Now get this. With the video that Francoise posted, she um, set up everything. I'd already cleaned up everything that day, so she set it up. She put the dishes back in the dishwasher. She was reenacting basically things that I do do a lot. So she staged the whole thing for views. Yeah, it was based off of things he did, but she staged that whole video for views. And I mean, this lady truly sicked the most unhinged, intellectually bankrupt trolls on this guy. Look at this. You don't have ADHD, you're just lazy. Have you thought of Adderall or are you just so lazy you weaponize your incompetence. See, this is where Jackson is way more charitable than me because if someone's response to me saying I have anxiety was to say, well, have you tried gobbling up a bunch of downers or are you just committed to annoying the people around you for the rest of your life? they would have to take a nap. So while Francoise is running around telling people that Jackson is absolutely busting a gut laughing over this humor of hers, let's watch this next clip and see if that's really how he feels. I just love all the comments that are like, it's not his ADHD, he's just lazy. Like, that's literally the opposite. It's 100% ADHD, I'm not lazy. I don't want to upset anyone. I'm trying super, super hard. Shout out to all my ADHD people out there because this and no one really takes you seriously. Doesn't really seem like he's loving it. But since the only content she makes outside of roasting her boyfriend are her cosmetic procedures, it's safe to say she's found her niche and probably isn't going to be doing anything else anytime soon. And you know, it's sad because if she put half as much time into researching things like brain fog, time blindness, executive dysfunction, and rejection sensitivity dysphoria, as she did putting Botox in her face, she'd probably have a lot more understanding of her man instead of judgment. But hey, I guess some women are just too lazy to do that. Before we get into any more partner shaming, I do want to take a little break to do a little bit of partner praising with the help of this video sponsor. Quick chicken and the egg question. Which do you think comes first? A good smelling man inspiring his woman to want to do nice things for him, or a woman who does nice things for her man inspiring him to want to look and smell better? In both situations, T. Shanley can help. If you want to do something nice and unique for your man, or you just want to start cleaning up nicer for your girl, I recommend Tiege Hanley. It's a monthly step-by-step -step men's skincare kit that's super easy for washing, scrubbing, and exfoliating to keep you clear and fresh. This kit is kind of a win-win for us because every man wants to feel, look, and smell good, and every woman wants their man to feel, look, and smell good too. When you use my code tiege.com slash dadvocate or follow the link in the description down below, you'll get 30% off plus a free gift. You will have to buy your own broom to fend off the droves of thirsty women. My girlfriend got drunk last night and submitted an application for a dog. I had to remind her I am allergic to dogs, to which she replied that I need to stop being so toxic. And I love dogs, I really do. But I also like being able to breathe. Her defense yeah. was that she was tipsy and he was cute, which evidently is the same reason she went out with me in the first place. She went ahead and scheduled an appointment for me with an allergist. Now, over the next six yeah. months, I need to show up once a week to get injections. She has made it very clear that whether or not the injections work by the fall, she is getting a dog. Because by the fall, I'm quoting here, it will no longer be her problem. Okay, that would be a wild story if true. I mean, a person would have to be extremely selfish, short-sighted, and ableist to bring a dog home without her partner's consent, knowing it would cause debilitating harm to him, shame him for the allergies he was born with, then force him into months of medical procedures just to support her drunk impulses, right? 
If this is real Trizolaire, it is, I absolutely will thank you. Oh, what the fuck? I mean, that was really funny when I thought you made it up, but what's wrong with your girlfriend, dude? In the comments we have, my partner was allergic, now he takes pills to not die. Ladies, if he wanted to, he would. My husband volunteered to get allergy shots right when we first moved in together, you're already behind. I mean, she's setting boundaries. Seems fair. Can someone please explain to me why her elective drunk boundaries are a higher priority than his mandatory medical boundaries? And what is with all these weird flexes? Like, my husband already died of his allergies. If he really loved you, you'd be a widow by now. You know how there's always someone willing to do your job for less money? That's how the dating world is working right now. The way the bare minimum goalposts keep moving is turning it all into a competition of which men will suffer the most for women. And I personally Personally, I'm not here for it. I know there's a lot of girlies out there supporting her gaslight gatekeep girl boss lifestyle, but look, someone's got to say it, and I guess I'm gonna be the one to say it. Dude, your girlfriend sucks. Our relationship before we had a child thinking we were gonna dominate the world. Our relationship now. All right, so I've seen like 3,000 different iterations of this TikTok because it is a trend by now, but this is the one where at 5.3 million views, someone finally pointed out that it's a little bit partner shamey. Okay, I was never partner shaming, I was never talking crap, and I was not saying this goes out to anyone. So of course we get the Just Kidding We're Fine video. It was a euphoria clip basically stating that when you have a relationship and you happen to have a child, you tend to get distant with your partner. I wasn't coming at him. I wasn't talking crap. I never said anything specifically that he did. At 1130 at night, I was freaking venting. It got back to my boyfriend. He was really surprised by how many views it got. And we ended up talking through it. And we saw a lot to work through, but we're fine. I think the most annoying thing about people who try to gaslight you is all the extra labor that they make you go through having to explain to them why the thing that they're doing that they know is wrong is wrong. But I got time today. This is partner shaming because no, your clip does not imply that the emotional disconnect after a child is organic on both sides. It implicitly places blame on your partner, paints him as a huge a-hole, and as a meme does overarchingly present this as exclusively an issue that women face from men after a child. And to showcase how disingenuous you're being, let's slow down the clip that you presented. Dude clearly has the height advantage, can see over everyone, can obviously see this woman who is clearly looking for him and brushes past her aggressively as she tears up. I'm sorry, how is this not you trying to position yourself as the victim and him as the aggressor? And this is all so much worse if you actually know the plot of Euphoria and you know what a heinous villain the character of Nate is. And you never explain to us how exactly you're fine after you just compared him to the antagonist of a popular TV show. And they always pin the video, don't they? Now, beautifully, the majority of the comments were actually from other parents encouraging her by telling her that the first year is always hard, she'll make it through but others. Nope, this ain't how it should be. Y'all got the wrong partners. It's called disrespect. I see a lot of comments supporting and love that, but I'm also here to tell you divorce is an option and okay. I fought so hard and finally gave up. And then there's this lady who says this clearly means he didn't want his kid. So if we can all admit that it's normal in the first year of having a baby for priorities to change and for partners to occasionally reject each other because trust and believe men are getting brushed past just as much, why is it trendy to demonize fathers? I mean, really think about it. Think of any time in history that you have ever heard a man attempt to complain about how little attention he receives from his wife after she's just had his kids. How well does it go for him? I think that after a vicious slew of hundreds of comments along the lines of leave her alone you sex pest and what is she your mother we get like one single solitary it's okay hon it gets better from someone's wine aunt martha and i just don't think it would be the same level of comfort look this is just your reminder that when it comes to what you post on social media people believe what you show them you can try to just kidding we're fine your way out of it all you want but if you convince millions of people on the internet that your boyfriend is a gigantic jerk who couldn't give two craps about the mother of his child when he's actually not then don't be mad at people when we call you a partner shamer bad partner shamer bad our relationship before we had a child thinking we were going to dominate the world our relationship now all right, so I've seen like 3,000 different iterations of this TikTok because it is a trend by now, but this is the one where at 5.3 million views, someone finally pointed out that it's a little bit partner shamey. Okay, I was never partner shaming, I was never talking crap, and I was not saying this goes out to anyone. 
So of course we get the just kidding, we're fine video. It was a euphoria clip basically stating that when you have a relationship and you happen to have a child, you tend to get distant with your partner. I wasn't coming at him, I wasn't talking crap, I never said anything specifically that he did. It was 11.30 at night and I was freaking venting. It got back to my boyfriend, he was really surprised by how many views it got and we ended up talking through it and we still have a lot to work through but we're fine. I think the most annoying thing about people who try to gaslight you is all the extra labor that they make you go through having to explain to them why the thing that they're doing that they know is wrong is wrong. But I got time today. This is partner shaming because no, your clip does not imply that the emotional disconnect after a child is organic on both sides. It implicitly places blame on your partner, paints him as a huge a-hole, and as a meme does overarchingly present this as exclusively an issue that women face from men after a child. And to showcase how disingenuous you're being, let's slow down the clip that you presented. Dude clearly has the height advantage, can see over everyone, can obviously see this woman who is clearly looking for him and brushes past her aggressively as she tears up. I'm sorry, how is this not you trying to position yourself as the victim and him as the aggressor? And this is all so much worse if you actually know the plot of Euphoria and you know what a heinous villain the character of Nate is. And you never explain to us how exactly you're fine after you just compared him to the antagonist of a popular TV show. And they always pin the video, don't they? Now, beautifully, the majority of the comments were actually from other parents encouraging her by telling her that the first year is always hard, she'll make it through but others. Nope, this ain't how it should be. Y'all got the wrong partners. It's called disrespect. I see a lot of comments supporting and love that, but I'm also here to tell you divorce is an option and okay. I fought so hard and finally gave up. And then there's this lady who says this clearly means he didn't want his kid. So if we can all admit that it's normal in the first year of having a baby for priorities to change and for partners to occasionally reject each other because trust and believe men are getting brushed past just as much, why is it trendy to demonize fathers? I mean, really think about it. Think of any time in history that you have ever heard a man attempt to complain about how little attention he receives from his wife after she's just had his kids. How well does it go for him? I think that after a vicious slew of hundreds of comments along the lines of leave her alone you sex pest and what is she your mother we'd get like one single solitary it's okay hon it gets better from someone's wine aunt martha and i just don't think it would be the same level of comfort look this is just your reminder that when it comes to what you post on social media People believe what you show them. You can try to just kidding, we're fine your way out of it all you want, but if you convince millions of people on the internet that your boyfriend is a gigantic jerk who couldn't give two craps about the mother of his child when he's actually not, then don't be mad at people when we call you a partner shamer. Bad partner shamer. Bad. Yesterday in an attempt to make me coffee in the morning, my husband asked me where the coffee was. Do you see it? Okay, so if you missed it, like a lot of people did, the coffee was right here in this unlabeled glass jar by the knives. Caption reads, weaponized incompetence or just stupid? Hashtag, men are stupid, hashtag, but I love him. You really came on the internet and accused your man of weaponized incompetence because he, hold on, let me check my notes, asked where coffee was? Weaponized incompetence is an abuse tactic. You just came on the internet and accused your man of abuse because you chose to pour what I assume was probably very clearly labeled coffee into a very clearly unlabeled glass jar. And she admits in the comments he doesn't even drink coffee. I always say, open your eyes. At this point, I just give him the look and then he looks harder. So you're really telling me he simply asked you where coffee was and instead of opening your mouth and using your big girl words, you just stared at him? Do you know what a tool bag my husband would look like if I asked him a simple question like where the coffee was and he chose to just stare at me passive aggressively and then make a passive aggressive post online about me calling me stupid? Now my faith in humanity was restored when Raya came in and said, I see the coffee pot but not the ground coffee. I don't blame him on this one. To which, of course, delightful Allie replies, it's been on the counter in the same spot for months. He uses the things next to it daily. Raya says, okay, if he doesn't use it specifically and it's not labeled, how do you expect him to know? I couldn't even tell it was coffee. To which Allie says, he watches me use it. Okay, ladies, contrary to popular belief, men do not just watch and stare at you all day taking detailed notes of the exact way that you like and prefer things. You still have to communicate. But not for nothing, whether we have a kid or not, I'm not staying in a relationship where my partner calls me stupid. King can do better. Bad partner shamer. Bad. My husband told me not to post this, but he isn't on TikTok. There. He left 
evidence behind. <laughs> the joke, the evidence behind is that lotion was left in the bathroom here. But the other problematic part that we need to really consider is the fact that my husband told me not to post this. But her explanation for why she chose to do it is, but he isn't on TikTok, so it's okay to cross boundaries as long as you don't get caught. Is that how you think boundaries work? My husband told me not to cheat on him, but he's not in this zip code. <laughs> so it's basically like it didn't even happen. <laughs> My husband won't eat if it's not something he likes. And this used to bother me, but now I accommodate it. That's not a healthy thing to do in a relationship, much less spouses who are supposed to have equal partners. Part two. Oh, part two. This is partner shaming. People aren't getting it. They're, they're not getting the satire. They simply hate this grown-ass iPad baby. Your man has an Xbox controller to his left, an iPad in his hand, the phone on his shoulder, a laptop in his lap, a blankie on, and you're serving him mac and cheese, recognizing that this is gonna be really funny later on the internet. And not like a, I'm so happy that my wife serves me mac and cheesies while I'm on my iPad-y time smile. This guy is getting tore. Interesting things I found in my boyfriend's room while he was out golfing. A book about how monogamy isn't realistic in our society. An eyelash wand that is absolutely not mine. I don't even get my lashes done. Oh. Okay, so at face value, what we seem to be looking at here is she introduces us to every interesting or suspicious thing that she finds, including a book about how monogamy is not realistic in today's society and a lash wand that is not hers heavily implying he's cheating. Yeah, it's not looking too good for this guy here, but hey, at least she didn't show his face, right? So when that didn't go as she planned, she actually makes another Just Kidding We're Fine video, but this time where she very sardonically blames us, the audience, for not getting it, claiming that it was all satire. It's okay. You can laugh. It's funny. Yeah, he looks real impressed. 